In this segment, we're going to continue our discussion of ethical issues, and we're going to come to the issue of exclusion. This is one of the four factors that we are going to look at, and it, it deals with cases where underprivileged users are left behind by systems. This arises from the fact that most of the annotated data we have just historically in the field of NLP is English data. And while it's broadened recently, a lot of the early history of the field was dealing with newswire data, which is a very kind of specific and narrow slice of language. So we can think about several different uh, kind of groups that may not be able to use systems as effectively if these systems are not uh, kind of optimized on the right data. So for example, speakers of dialects. Uh, a lot of systems are trained assuming a kind of uh, written language, like for example, what's written in newspapers, and this doesn't agree with what a lot of people speak day to day. Uh, we've already talked about issues like the sort of lack of linguistic diversity and the lack of data for many languages in the world, particularly when you get outside of Indo-European and uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, you get to areas where we just have much less data and systems are going to work less well. Um, and another interesting phenomenon is code switching, where uh, people will use different languages in the same utterance. And this is also something which happens a lot more in informal text. And so language models trained over largely more formal data gathered from the internet are not going to handle this as well. So there are lots of people who fall into one of these categories who are not going to be able to use language technology like ChatGPT and find that it works as well as it works for English speakers who this was kind of principally designed for. So the good news is that there's a lot of effort to broaden things along all of these axes. For example, the Universal Dependencies Project originated to try to make syntactic parsers that would work well for lots of different languages and dialects, etc. Um, Masakane NLP is a project to basically build out all sorts of NLP technology for a variety of African languages. I'm going to also highlight a couple of other current efforts which I think are particularly interesting data sets. So uh, this is a data set called GOM Llama from Dayin et al, which looks at understanding cultural knowledge about different countries. So it tries to cover a view of culture that's uh, a little bit absent maybe from a lot of our standard data sets. And it tries to do so in a multilingual way. So there will be questions like in traditional X weddings where we can put X as American or Chinese or Indian, etc. The color of wedding dress is usually blank. And then as an additional kind of wrinkle, so not just asking about the color of wedding dresses in different weddings, we can ask this question in different languages as well. So we can see in Hindi, does our, is, does our system know what color wedding dresses are in Chinese weddings, for example? And one really interesting finding is that this often does better with mismatched pairs of language and country. So for example, you would do better by asking in Hindi in traditional American weddings what color is the wedding dress because of a reporting bias where it's a little more likely to have this described in for another culture other than your own. Uh, but there's still a long way to go on this. Systems are not very good at this, and it's a good uh, kind of test bed for multilingual pre-trained models to see if they can do this. Another kind of similar, in a similar vein, is this data set Marvel by Fang Liu et al., which looks at understanding visual knowledge where the images are crowdsourced to be uh, kind of geographically diverse. So they don't just feature people in Western countries, but are trying to get a broad distribution from all over the world. And then the languages used to ask the questions or to uh, basically pose the hypotheses that you're classifying as true or false are also diverse. You, so you have many different languages describing many different types of photos. So this kind of visual reasoning, there's also an effort to make sure that it can work for uh, folks who are taking photos in other places and asking and you know making these statements or asking questions in other languages. 
So these are representative of a few of the efforts to improve things along this axis of exclusion, but there's still a long way to go before we have systems like ChatGPT that truly work kind of as well on every language. Right now, these systems, the performance on English is up here and other things, uh, typically it works a little bit worse. That's the end of the segment.